Hello again and welcome back. And with just three days to go, I am sure that you're all set to go. But sadly, the time isn't yet. But never fear, I have this countdown series to give you your daily dose of delving into the lore. Now, today, we're going to be covering a subject that has been building up for a long time. Since our initial campaign in the Destiny 1 game, the Fallen, or the Elixni, have been weaker than ever before. This was majorly prominent due to the new Fallen House in the House of Dusk, which wasn't strictly a Fallen House, more an amalgamation of what was left of the Fallen, hoping to find some refuge in numbers. However, over the years we have seen some characters potentially prepared to bring the Elixni back into prominence. However, there may be a difference in opinion of what exactly that might be. I'm sure by now that you have guessed that we're going to be looking at notable Fallen who could play a prominent role in a Fallen storyline over the season pass perhaps. Please note that this is purely speculatory and I only guessed the season pass because if I was writing it, it would likely be over more than one season. Then again, I am a massive lore nerd so I may not be the best source for how much time a game should spend on story. That aside, let's begin with the most notorious. We know that Varix fled from the prison of elders to become the Kell of Kells to see the fallen rise out of despair into light of their former ways. He sought to unite the Elixni. Since the events transpiring in Forsaken, the current whereabouts of Varix are unknown. He would likely seek to go into hiding, some place away from the eyes of the reef and the guardians. This potentially rules out all of the inner solar system, as even though some locations are more explored than others, Varix would not want to risk being in such close range of the Reef and the City Vanguard where they could track him down and take him out, which they most surely will after their losses they suffered. Therefore only the Jovian systems remain. The moons of Jupiter and Saturn are ideal for Varix, as he would be too far away in uncharted territory so that the Guardians couldn't mobilise substantially, not to mention the dire state of the Reef and the Dreaming City making transit to the outer system extremely dangerous, and so Europa could become the place where Varix would seek to lift the Fallen back up again, away from the wrath of the city and the reef, with a possible treasure trove of human golden age technology on the ruins of settlements such as Europa and Enceladus for salvaging. And as we know, thanks to the final interference mission, a gift awaits us on Europa and so it is safe to say that the story will take place here. As Varix calls on the Fallen to join him, this could cause the scattered bands of Fallen to attempt to cross over the Jovian systems and gain access to Golden Age ruins and technology to give them the upper hand. The Fallen getting their hands on powerful tech like this would be incredibly dangerous for the city and for the Reef. This also obviously does not bode well for the Scorn situation in the Reef, plunging the outpost and the Tangled Shore to f into further chaos. The next character that we're going to be looking at is Mithrax the Forsaken. After the Siva Crisis, Mithrax would leave his Wolfborn house and join the House of Dusk along with the remainder of his fallen brethren. Guardians will encounter Mithrax and his crew in chances and choices, as both parties compete to access an ancient methane reactor. Various barricade servitors and the high servitor Selkis, the obstructor, are put in the way to prevent the Guardian from reaching the core, along with local high forces swarming the complex attacking both. Mithrax is later seen dueling against a hive knight, in which the Guardians are given a choice in who to kill. Killing the Hive Knight and sparing Mithrax will trigger an alternative ending in which you'll thank the Guardian with an elixir display of respect, similar to what he received from Jure ages ago. He disappears and grants the player access to the reactor. Whilst not physically appearing throughout the Forsaken story, sparing him is revealed to be the canon choice. Having been touched by Jure's display of humility and the Guardian's mercy, 
he defects from the House of Dusk and swears allegiance to the last city, eventually joining a fire team of guardians. He has also founded the unofficial House of Light to lead more open-minded Elixney as their Kel, arguing for the sake that humanity, not the fallen, have proven befitting of the Traveller and its gift. Later on, in the season of the Drifter, Mithrax beckons the Guardians to the farm, using a fallen transponder. Interacting with Mithrax takes both him and the Guardian to the old tower, where they chase down the House of Devil's Loyalists who have stolen preserved Siva tech from a cryptarch vault deep inside. The group is in search of the weapon known as Outbreak Perfected. Since then, Mithrax and the House of Light have been hard at work to establish an alliance with humanity, requesting the Fallen to join the House of Light and stand a chance of survival in the coming darkness by allying themselves with Guardians. The prospect of protection and a house to call their own would certainly be an enticing for fallen exiles and wanderers. But there is another potential player at the table that could play a bigger role than what she has up until now. A former Baroness of the Devils, now likely a Kel. You see, back during the Joker's Wild expansion, Mithrax leads us to a heist on the tower where a group of former house devils are attempting to raid the Cryptarch Vault for the weapon Outbreak Perfected to harvest Siva from it. This heist was led by Cyrix, loyal to Aramis. Aramis, who was first mentioned in the D1 expansion House of Wolves, where Varix calls her Aramis the ship stealer, Baroness of the Devils. Clearly she has been busy, because even if she didn't orchestrate the heist, at the very least she inspired Cyrix to do it, and to try and raid the tower right next to us is a very bold move, like someone who has been in the shadows, waiting for their moment to strike. Will the Fallen be waging a three-sided civil war? Only time can tell, but for certain, I think we should all keep an eye on Mithrax, Varix, and Aramis. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. There's just three days left until Beyond Light, and I will be there with you every step of the way. As always, thank you very much for taking time to watch and listen to me talk. It's more than I could ask. Take it easy, everybody. And I will see all of you in the next video.